soul. That word redeemed means you've been bought back. God delivered you out of some stuff. It means you ought to say something. Come on, with this kind of anointing in the room, hey, yeah, anything is likely to happen. Come on, miracles, signs, wonders, breakthroughs, healings. I dare you just to get something on your mind and start praising God for it right now. Go ahead. Come on, family delivered. Sons and daughters saved. Come on, that person you've been mentoring gets a breakthrough. Come on, the money you've been believing God for is released. Come on, a fresh anointing is on your life to chase demons and devils out. I want you to get it on your mind this morning. You're in an atmosphere of miracles. Anything is likely to happen that by the time you get back home, God would have moved some things in your favor. Come on, one last time. Give your God a shout of praise like you know victory just hit your house. We greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Who is the head of our life and the head of the church. Amen. He is the one that rules, reigns with all power and authority in his hands. Amen. Sickness don't reign. Depression don't reign. The devil don't reign. But Jesus reigns. Yes. And because he reigns, you and I walk in victory. Amen. Amen. To God be the glory for the great things he has done. Luke chapter 6. I want to get into the word of God this morning. We're in a brand new sermon series entitled Airplane Mode. Amen. I tried to throw y'all a little video out there and get out of my comfort zone. Uh, so hopefully it was inspiring. <laughs> All right. Airplane Mode is a brand new sermon series the Lord put on my heart um, that after we uh, had three powerful, packed out uh, resurrection services. We met nearly 1,000 people last weekend between Saturday and Sunday. <laughs> Spring Fest, hundreds came out and, and we blessed and we had a wonderful time in a huge family reunion, ATVs, eggs, dancing, barbecue, come on, connecting. Uh, card playing and losing and tug of war winning the men praise God and and sorry boys but the girls got y'all but you know we had an amazing weekend together as UCC nation come on <laughs> and then three powerful services worshiping the Lord we learned about authority uh, as Christians, we learned about Jesus paying our debt in full. We learned about living life in victory, that love won at Calvary so we could live in victory here today. We learned so much. And after Easter is now where the work begins. And I asked everyone to give me four weeks. And maybe, maybe you're my four-week friend that said, I'm going to give you four weeks, Bishop. And, uh, and so we got to do a little bit of work to make sure that we lay a foundation of what Christianity is all about. Amen. And so I wanted to jump into a, a series entitled Airplane Mode um, because we live in a noisy world. And even when we're alone, uh, apart from sound, we're bombarded with text messages, emails, social media messages. And, and, and literally the desire uh, to seek that quiet time. Um, isn't only about finding a quiet place. It's about discovering the gift of removing ourselves from uh, the abundance of messages so that we could find our rest uh, and find relationship uh, and find the presence of God. Psalm 16, 11 says, You will make known the path of life for me in your presence. Watch this. There's some benefits. There's fullness of joy, right? That's for that person who seems like they're losing their joy. And then at your right hand, pleasures forevermore.
But, but then he, here it is. He also makes known the past. What should I do next? What job should I take? Where should I go? Who should I marry? All of that happens in the presence of God, in the presence of Jesus. And so today I just want to talk a little bit about one-on-one time. I'm going to read just two verses for you in Luke chapter 6 from the Amplified Bible. Now in those days, it occurred that he went up into the mountain to pray, and he spent the whole night in prayer to God. And when it was day, he summoned his disciples and selected from them 12 whom he named apostles or special messengers. Uh, You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. I want to preach from the thought, um, I need one-on-one time one-on-one time so in this noisy world filled with distractions um, uh, th- that that are all consuming and constant I believe that God wants us to find solitude um, in seeking quietness and discovering the profound gift of connecting with Jesus amidst the chaos when we look at examples of Jesus and the Apostle Paul One of the things that we learned that gave them the authority and the victory is that they had intentional sit and soak time. Sit and soak time. Uh, I get that from uh, Mary uh, in Luke chapter 10, 38 through 42. We see uh, an example of sit and soak time with Mary and Martha. Uh, Martha invites Jesus into her house. But she doesn't practice his presence. She, she's busy. And the text says that she is troubled about many things. She loses her peace trying to prepare for someone she should have been prepared for. Uh, and, and God said to me, he said, a lot of times we're inviting Jesus in unprepared. It's as if we were not prepared to receive his grace, prepared to receive his goodness, his presence, prepared to host him. Uh, We've just gotten uh, comfortable with just kind of kind of having a a peak of him, uh, just kind of doing a drive by with Jesus. but, But 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 Jesus is looking for those folks that will host him. Yeah, yeah. A, a, a good host uh, has, has the house set up. It's clean. You don't want to bring nobody in the nasty house. <laughs> My wife is OCD at best, and, 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 and y'all better get this house clean. I mean, she had a whole week lined up. You know, we, uh, she, probably, she months ahead, y'all. Now, at the end of the month, we're going to have a gathering. And uh, if anybody know my wife in our house... You got two hours, two good hours, and you got to go. <laughs> Baby walked in there cutting out lights, everything, and, and, and letting you know it's time to shift. <laughs> this is my house and my space, praise the Lord. Uh, uh, but but she, she, will, she will prepare ahead so that when you get there, you have the maximum experience. And, and we are not missing an opportunity to entertain you because we prepare for you. I'm already preaching when y'all get ready. We are not missing the opportunity to share with you and to grow together because preparations have already been made. And, and, and in view of the fact that he has already prepared a place for us, Luke 14, uh, he, says, he says, I go to prepare a place for you. Yeah, that, that where I am, there you may be also. It's indicative of us to prepare for him. Yeah, and so, and so when we look at this text, um, we see, we see a, a Jesus preparing himself to make a major life decision. And what we learn from this text uh, today is that in this noisy world filled with chaos, uh, we as believers need to discover the profound gift of connecting with Jesus in amidst all the noise. Yeah, we, we, we need to learn how to turn the volume down on the noise 
and turn it up on our worship. When we look at the examples of Jesus and Paul, we learn that moments of silence and solitude with God can heal past wounds and prepare us for future challenges. Uh, when we look at this text, there are three things I want you to see here. Um, first of all, I think it's important to know Jesus here in Luke chapter 6 is at war with the Pharisees. He's at war with the Pharisees, and these were religious leaders. They were legalists. They were those who, who practiced Judaism, and, and, and they, they were so legal. Uh, they, they were what we would call modern-day religious folk or church folk. They had, there weren't just Ten Commandments that they practiced. There was a, over, over 300 commandments. Um, that they were trying to keep. They had a way of boxing themselves in and boxing people out because they didn't want to be bothered. <laughs> we are better than you. We're holier than you are. <laughs> you can't reach our standard. <laughs> God loves us more. We're more godly. We're more sanctified. Hallelujah. We are perfect. They, 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 they had this system of legalism and, and these rules that you had to obtain. And, and they, were, they were eager about making more and more rules to get to Jesus or to get to God uh, because they didn't believe in Jesus. Um, they had all of these rules and these things, these check boxes that you had to check off in order to get to God. What they were missing was the relationship they knew the scriptures they didn't know the savior of the scriptures they knew the bible they didn't know the god of the bible they had religion but they didn't have relationship it's dangerous to come to church but don't have church in you it, 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 it is dangerous to to carve out this time for attendance and you not be present your body's here with me but your mind is on the other. Okay. And God said, there are a lot of folk sit in the pews, but don't practice my presence. And so we leave empty when, when this was really a time to be filled up, to be restored, to be healed, to be delivered, to be set free. But, but are we guilty of being uh, in attendance but never engaging God Jesus Jesus and Paul shows us that the way that they were able to walk in such authority is they had one on one time look at Luke uh, chapter 6 verse 12 it says now in those days uh, it occurred that he went up into the mountain to pray now uh, Jesus frequently uh, seeks time apart uh, throughout the gospel narratives he's not seeking solitude for the sake of solitude there's a purpose for his seeking he's seeking quiet time with a purpose his solitude and silence, watch this, it makes space necessary to commune with God. It's an environment that there is a such environment where prayer uh, flourishes. Consider Jesus' own instructions to his followers in the Sermon on the Mount. When he tells them in Matthew 6, verse 6, let's look at it. He says, but when you pray, not if you pray, when you pray. Right. So prayer is a part of a Christian believer's lifestyle. Somebody say prayer. prayer, prayer, which means that we have regular communication and communion fellowship with God, our father. We need that every day. That, that, that doesn't need to be something you do sometime. See, prayer to God is like communication in a marriage. If married folk don't talk, they can't walk. Well, I'm preaching better than you're saying amen. In Amos 3 and 3, can two walk together except they be in agreement? If we don't talk, we can't walk. And that's why we got over 50% of marriages in divorce. Ain't no good talking going on. 
And so prayer in the same way becomes the lifeline to God. That, that, that if you're going to live life victoriously and life full, you have to have some intentional time where you talk to Jesus. Oh, him writer, hymnologist would say, uh, just a little talk with Jesus makes it right. Now let us have a little talk with Jesus. Tell him all about our troubles. He will hear our faintest cry. Answer by and by. Now when you hear the little prayer wheel turning, know a little fire is burning. Just a little talk with Jesus. Oh, y'all know it too. Yeah. Yeah. And so, so the Bible says, but when you pray, look what he says. Write this down. Go into your room. <laughs> Shut the door. Huh? Jesus said, you know them children noisy. You know the other folk in the house got the TV all out. Because they have not learned how to live with the silence. Some people are intimidated by the silence of their own mind and inner self. Because they are at war and in conflict within. But you don't understand the answer to the war and the conflict that is in your head and got you in your head is that you have a little talk with Jesus. Oh, somebody needs to calm the war that's raging in your mind. The devil got you living in your head, assuming and tripping and paranoid and, 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 and wondering and if this and if that. And God says, no, the way you quiet the war in your mind is talk to Jesus. I feel his presence in here. We're going to the mountain in a minute. Listen, the Bible says go into your room. Shut the door and pray to your father who is in secret. Now watch this. Here, here, watch the result. Watch the result. And your father who sees in secret rewards you openly. Write this down. Prayer is your private discipline that brings a public reward. <laughs> The, 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 the prayer is the private discipline that brings the public reward. Now, now, watch this now. Watch this. Luke mentions our Lord's retirement to pray. He had important decisions to make, and his enemies were after him, and so it was necessary that he pray. You know, he didn't get on the telephone. He didn't, he didn't, he, he wasn't on social media. He he, 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 he wasn't scrolling and, and, and calling up and texting everybody. Look what they did to me. And, and would you believe what they said? And hey, Jesus, I ain't got time for that. He, he says, I need to retire from the chaos. In other words, I, I, I need to get back from this because I'm in too deep. And, and, and it's consuming. all I'm thinking about. It's consuming my mind. Have you ever been there before where it was all you were thinking about? That thing was consuming your, 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 your mind. And, and the devil loves that because watch this. Watch this. Anxiety is defined as a preoccupation. It is an attack. Psychologists would deduce that anxiety is an attack on your nervous system. It, it, it brings nervous tension and stress and high blood pressure. And it's the enemy's assignment to assault you in the mind. Because a breakdown in the mind is a breakdown in your life. As your thought life goes, your life flows. Proverbs 23 verse 7 says, as a man thinks in his heart so is he the devil's after your peace of mind and, and, and so what Jesus says is we have to learn how to back back from it so that we can go in to the presence of God so number one number one one-on-one -on -one time has a destination one-on-one -on -one time has a destination. Are we writing? Watch this. He says, he says, when you go into your room, shut your door, and your father who sees you praying in secret will reward you how? Openly. openly. He'll reward you openly. For Jesus, verse 12, uh, shows the action of praying as well as the place of prayer. Prayer has a destination. The place of prayer for Jesus was on the mountain. The mountain, watch this, is where movement happens for Jesus. It's on the mountain. He has to move up to the mountain 
uh, because the mountain is away from where he currently is. And it's on the mountain that he gets movement. I'm just trying to tell somebody it's in prayer that you're going to get some movement. Yeah. Matthew 7 verse 7, please. The Bible says, ask and it shall be given. Seek and you shall, you will find. Knock and the door will be what? Open to you. Verse 8, he says, for everyone who keeps on asking does what? Look at the promise. And he who keeps on seeking does what? And he who keeps on knocking does what? It's going to be open. See, sometimes we got defeated in our petitioning. And so we quit practicing prayer. You say, well, God didn't hear me. He didn't answer me. And so, so I just, you know, I guess he just didn't want me to have it. And so we abdicated the place of prayer when sometimes, hear me very clearly, we forget that prayer also has a waiting period. There is a waiting room attached to prayer. That's why Isaiah says in Isaiah 40 verse 31, they that wait upon the Lord shall what? Renew. Wait a minute. It meant that they had some strength, but they lost it waiting. Hey, glory. He said they shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not get weary. He says, wait, I say on the Lord. Young men will get weary. Uh, other men will utterly, their strength will utterly fail. But they that wait upon the Lord. You will, you will have times in your life where it seems like your strength is failing. Where you are exhausted in the process of waiting. But hear me, we are not to wait passively. We are to wait prayerfully. Waiting for the Christian is an active process. Notice that Mary in Luke 10, uh, uh, 38, had, I quoted it earlier. She was sitting at the Lord's feet. She was sitting. She wasn't worried about the clock. She wasn't worried about her schedule. She wasn't worried about what she had to do next. Many times we don't see an invasion of glory because we have too much inter interrupted time with the Lord. God says, I need some uninterrupted where you can talk to me and then you can hush so I can talk to you because prayer is not a monologue. Prayer is a dialogue. Lord have mercy. Jeremiah 33 and 3, he says, call unto me and I will answer you. And I will show you. Wait a minute. So when I call to him, I need to expect that he will answer. Are we here this morning? Because sometimes we just, we just doing it because it's religious. And I believe today, Holy Spirit is moving us from religious prayer, just the routine of it. Uh, Father, I come once and again, knee bent, body bound. Thank you that my cooling board with my winding sheets and my, I, I'm probably saying it all wrong. But anyways, uh, you know, it, 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 uh, uh, now I lay me down to sleep. I pray my Lord to soul and keep if I die before. No! Maybe that got you started. But there has to be a place where you move from praying out of a book, praying a nursery rhyme, to praying from relationship that God, I need you, Lord. I, I'm messed up down here, Father. I ain't got no special kind of prayer. I'm just talking to Jesus. Anybody in the building say, I just talked to him, man. I don't... I, I just talked to, I, I, I ain't got no mm, father. Yeah. No. I'm just talking to him. I, it's one on one time. The Lord said, just like you get with your friends, just like you get with your family members. He says, I need that same one on one time. Here it is, because here's the rule. Communication is successful when what comes from the heart reaches the heart. Because many people communicate, but few people connect. 
They talking with head, but ain't got no heart. He caught up by show. Yes, Jesus. Lord have mercy. God said, I'm looking for the folk that's got a heart in this thing. That, that sometimes you go to them with tears, and sometimes you go to them smiling with joy. I just came to thank you. I, I, I'm not coming to ask you for anything. I don't want to become selfish in my prayer life. I, I'm just coming, God, because I love you. I don't I, I don't I don't need anything, and if I do, I'm not gonna include it in this prayer. I want to thank you for of being so good to me. I almost lost my mind. I should have went crazy through that last relationship but you kept my mind together and I want to pause and give you thanks and praise. Ooh, can we practice the presence of God by just giving him an applaud? Thank you Jesus. Musicians would call it an encore. When the show was good, they would say, encore, encore. And what that means is do it again, do it again. Do it again. I'm sorry, I'm just getting happy too early. Lord have mercy. Oh God, oh God, I'm getting happy too early. Oh, 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 I'm sorry. I, my mind rolls back. I, oh. It's got a destination. Where, where do you go when you're stressed out? Where do you go when you're troubled? Where is your destination? Where is your place of prayer? Not only does prayer have a destination, but number two, uh, one-on-one time requires unbroken devotion. That means you're not going to let anybody interrupt it. Yeah. You're not going to let anything get in the way of it. Unbroken devotion. The Bible says now in those days it occurred that when he went up into the mountain to pray, he spent the whole night in prayer to God. Whoa. Now we didn't spend some nights, but I don't know if it's been in prayer. Yeah, boy, your neighbor said, go on, get free. Tell the truth. Stop playing. Stop playing. This ain't the place to pray. Play is the place to pray. Come on. Stop playing. Stop playing. As we slept the night away. <laughs> yeah, we done done all kind of men. No devil. God said, you done slept the night away with them. When you going to sleep the night away with me? When I was growing up, we had all night lock-ins. Ain't nobody saying nothing. I just got a yell from some of the older saints over here, but everybody else, uh -huh. But you in the club at 2 a.m.? So watch this. What are we saying? I'm saying if we could give that kind of devotion to things that are not helping us get delivered, Shouldn't we give God the same kind of unbroken devotion? We were in Disney World a few years ago, and uh, uh, we heard all these horns. and ah, ah, this stuff. I, I didn't know if it was another terrorist attack or what. These people started throwing rugs on the ground, unzipping backpacks, and I'm like, oh, God. I just started pulling everybody together. My, all my babies, my wife, my children. And... Uh, they started getting down, and, and they went in prayer. And I said, wow. In the middle of Disney World, they didn't care who saw them. They didn't care who knew it. Unbroken devotion. They would take that time for Allah. And we got the Savior of the whole universe. And we too busy? 
Come on, come on. I want you just to think with me. Think with me. It, it, it can't be. It, it, it can't be. Listen, listen. We must make time for the Lord. How, how do we do that, Bishop? How do we do that? Can I give you just a, a, a little quick plan and, and give you my third point and go home? Well, not home for me, but for you. I, I, I got to do one more time. Here we go. Number one, read a verse. Read a Bible verse. You, you ready? You said, give me something practical. Read a verse. If you're going to have strong one-on-one -on -one time with God, meet with God. I was listening to Dr. Bill Hybels, and he said, when we meet with God, our days go better. Yeah. Matthew 6, verse 33 says, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and then all these other things we've been looking for, he adds them. But, but Bill Hyper says when we meet with God, it aligns our head and our heart with our Savior. My head and heart are now in alignment with my Lord. Your day different. You start stronger. So when the demonic come against you, that coworker that's crazy in the head come against you. God bless you. You, you just kind of, you chilling. You unbothered. Why? Because you started the day getting your head and heart in alignment with God. Uh, are we blessed? Amen. Psalms 37 verse 4. Delight yourself in the Lord. And he will give you the desires. Oh, I feel Jesus in this room. The desires of your heart. Number one, read a Bible verse. Number two, reflect on that verse. Reflect on that verse. Right? Think about that verse. How does that apply to you? Right? Number three, record what God desires of you. Right? Read, reflect, record. What does God desire of you? Lord, what are you asking me to do in view of what I read today? Is it to make more time for you? Is it to put you at the head of my day so you can bless the whole of my day? Psalms 127 verse 1, unless the Lord builds your house, then those who are working or laboring work for nothing. Wow. Wow, F a lot of effort, but no fruit. The Lord ain't billing. We ain't billing with him first, right? Put God first and then get your day going, right? The Lord may have some, some instructions for you throughout that day. So watch this, writing, uh, you want to write down what does God desire of you. Habakkuk 2, 2 through 3, he says, write the vision, make it plain. And then others will read it and run with it. And he says, though it tarry, though it go through a waiting period, he said, wait for it. It's going to speak what you prayed for. And it will not lie. My God. <laughs> Writing brings clarity and acceleration to what you prayed for. Wow. Come on, somebody. But, but when you write it, it etches it in your heart and in your spirit. See, when you're praying for stuff, you ought to write down your prayer points. What am I praying for for the month of April? What are your prayer points? You ought to write at least five to ten things that you believe in God for for this month. And watch how they accelerate to come to pass. Are we blessed? Watch this now. Watch this now. Then, then number four, request from God. Request from God. This is where you say, Father, I thank you, right, that I have received what I prayed for. Right? Number five, repent of any unconfessed sin. First John 1 and 9 says, if you confess your sins, the Lord is faithful and just to forgive your sins and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. There ain't no sin too big for God. That's the devil telling you that. The Lord wants you to come to him. We spend more time running from him. John ran from the presence of God. Things only got worse. When Jonah finally turned and ran to in Jonah 2, that's when he saw deliverance. Not only in his life, but in others' lives. Right? At number five, rejoice over God's faithfulness. Rejoice over his faithfulness. Praise him for being faithful. Praise him for bringing it to pass. Right? So number one, three things we looked at. Number one, one-on-one -on -one time uh, is requires a destination one-on-one -on -one time needs unbroken devotion one-on-one -on -one time finally empowers you to make better decisions 
I'm closing. But Jesus, can you imagine uh, his situation? Imagine his situation. Uh, he is the Lord of Lords, the King of Kings. He is a Jew coming to Jews who don't believe he's the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And he is telling them, if you look back up in Luke chapter 6, if you do a, a full study of this chapter, read it in context so you don't con yourself out the text. He says this, I'm the Lord of the Sabbath. <laughs> it's my day. They say blasphemy. He should be stoned to death. Right? And, and they don't understand who he really is. Right? They don't understand who he really is. And so they cannot accept him because they haven't took the time to get to know him. How often do we misjudge people because we didn't take time to get to know him? Or watch this. We, 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 we moved uh, uh, in assumption that we hail from what other people close to us told about them. We still keeps us at a distance and not in one-on-one -on -one time you have to come close to get to know somebody hear me if, if you're going to make better decisions then you have to have one-on-one -on -one time with Jesus decisions determine destiny your life is, is lived and your, your, your destiny is determined by the decisions that you make daily. Right? Your decisions affect your destination. Uh, uh, Sarah and Abraham got tired of waiting for the Lord. And so they decided, we're going to go ahead and make us a baby. <laughs> they, they, they said God's plan is taking too long. What they didn't know is that when God doesn't deliver right at that moment, he's processing us to the deliverance. Because waiting works on you while it's working on it. Decisions. So they made an Ishmael decision. And they ended up reaping the results of a decision. Because watch this. You can do something in seconds. It takes you a lifetime to get out of. So never make decisions when you're hungry, angry, lonely, tired. Somebody say halt. Halt. Yep. Um, Jesus very well could have been in his feelings. These men and attacked him. He knows who he is. Only he's got to make a major decision for ministry in the next in the 14th verse. He has to choose 12 men. 12 is the prophetic number of government. Rulership. He's got to identify 12 men who are going to take ministry to the next level. Can you see the conflict here? At a time when he needs a sound mind and clarity, the enemy sends people who should understand him to attack him. Wow. At a time when he needs to be most focused, his own people are waging war against him calling him fake calling him false and his response to the negativity of people that should know him was to pull away and get one on one time and say father I stretch my hands to thee. No other help I know. If thou withdraw thyself from me, where shall I go? Have you ever been there before? We had to make a major decision. 
Jesus says, I can't do this emotionally because my flesh is telling me to do one thing. My, my flesh is guiding me to say something, but, but, but I got to halt because I should never make decisions when I'm hungry. You go in the store and buy up everything. No, you shouldn't have went in there shopping and you on an empty stomach. You done bought all them chips. You said you was going to stop eating all that grease. <laughs> Just look straight. They won't know it's you. Oh, you shouldn't have made no decisions when you angry because you in too deep. You're ticked off right now. You are in fight or flight response. And so you are scientifically dumber. Because less oxygen gets to the brain. You're going to make a decision now? I take everything. Um, I came to give, give it back. I'm, I'm sorry. I, uh, I, was, I wasn't thinking in the moment. When you, we all know what I'm talking about. We ain't going to say nothing. But, but see, we, you, we need to step back. God is talking to somebody this morning right now. You angry about something. And you need to step back from that. And get the mind of Christ in this situation. Philippians 2, 5 says, let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus. We need the mind of Christ. Never make decisions hungry, angry, lonely. Need somebody. You got them, now you want to give them back. <laughs> just go. Don't, don't even, just, just go. Don't make decisions when you're lonely. That loneliness is first a sign that there's an absence of the Holy Ghost in your life. How did I know that? Genesis chapter 1. He says, I created man. I created the birds of the air. Birds need air. I created the fish of the sea. Fish need water. But I created man in my image and after my man need God. And the void, the hole in your soul ain't another person. The thing you're missing is Jesus. And when you get that right, watch this. You won't make a man try to be Jesus or a woman try to be Jesus. People can't feel a God-sized hole. Talk to me, somebody. People, people can't play God for you. No, you got to get that settled with him first. Luke 10, 27, I'm closing now. It says, love the Lord your God with all your heart soul, mind, and strength. And then watch this. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. First, love is vertically. God to man, man to God. Then love can be expressed horizontally. Man to man, man to woman. We get the vertical wrong and try to start with the horizontal. And there is no divinity to deal with our division. There is no divinity to deal with our discouragement. There is no divinity until we get love vertical. Glory to God. And God, we come to you with lifted hands and open hearts. And today we build you an altar. We understand prayer is not prayer without an altar. Moses built an altar. Jacob built an altar. Yaakov built an altar. And you altered him. You changed his name. Woo! My God, Joshua built an altar. Yeshua. And God, you delivered Israel. You rolled their past away because they built an altar. Today, Father, we come building you an altar. Hands are lifted. Hearts are raised toward heaven. 
we build you an altar for one-on-one -on -one time saying God forgive us forgive us for putting other things before you forgive us God for every idol that we have built forgive us for every person we made an idol that we loved more than you forgive us for everything that we love more than you today God we give you your place back we declare and decree that you rule and reign on the throne of our hearts <laughs> be seated Jesus upon the throne of our hearts ah yes God we come back today giving you true worship for you are a spirit oh God and you seek those that would worship you in spirit and in truth you promised us father in Psalm 16 11 that you would make known the path of life for us you will show us the path out of your presence <laughs> you will give us presence out of your presence <laughs> oh God but then you would give us praise out of your presence there is fullness of joy <laughs> and at your right hand pleasures forevermore so father have your way in us Lord send a refreshing anointing over us right now we break every spirit of discouragement right now we break every spirit of anxiety we break every spirit of torment of the enemy we break every spirit father of confusion and we release clarity right now oh God send clarity somebody's in the valley of decision but I thank you father that after today Lord they're going into your presence in a deeper way they're going into your presence in a fresh way they're gonna receive a fresh baptism of Holy Spirit a fresh fire of renewing oh yes God we receive a refreshing of your anointing now destroy every yoke that has bound us held us back that has entangled us every sin oh God be broken in the name of Jesus father for you said if we would cast up a confession that's our sins you would cast them into the sea of forgetfulness never to arise anymore thank you that the charges have been dropped yeah the charges have been cleared yeah thank you father thank you God that if any man be in Christ we are new creatures all things have passed away Woo! and all things yes Lord have been made new and we give you glory we give you praise thank you for this refreshing today starts anew in our lives we give you glory and praise in Jesus name amen come on lift your voices and give God praise come on give him praise hallelujah come on let's worship and receive a freshness the doors of the church are open the altar is open if you need prayer come on down if you want to be saved come on down you want to join the church come on down you say this is my church home you want to be baptized come on down all over the building come on give God praise souls are being delivered souls are being saved
Come on, there's a newness happening right now. There's a refreshing. Uh, there's a restoration a happening right now. It's in the atmosphere. This is an anointing of restoration. For I will restore the years that you sown in tears, says the Lord. I am the reconciler. I am the one that brings you back to fullness and brings you up to greatness, says the Lord. I am the one that breaks your shackles. I am the one that looses your chains, says the Lord. I am the one that moves my people into freedom. I am the one, says the Lord, that moves you from the labels and the limits and the lids and the stigmas of man. I am the one, yes, that refreshes and restores my people. I dare you just to lift those hands in worship and receive that anointing of restoration and refreshing that comes upon your life this day. For I will restore the years that the locust, the canker worm, the palmer worm, the caterpillar came to destroy. May you receive double for your trouble in Jesus' name. On. let's celebrate our brother who had a rededication brother Alton rededicated his life to Jesus come on church raise the roof in this place with praise the angels rejoice when one comes to Jesus Come on, clap your hands and open your mouth and give Jesus a shout of praise for fresh one-on-one -on -one time. Somebody say, I just went into airplane mode, unbothered, undistracted. Come on, unbound, unbending. And when I come out, devil, you better get ready. When I come out, world, you better get ready. Because this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. I want you to give God a crazy praise in this building. If you know God is raising you up for great. Hallelujah. The Lord is giving power to your decision making. Yeah. Decisions for destiny. There's leadership on your life. And how you move in this next season will be strategic. Yeah. And the Lord will give you wisdom and strategy for how to move in this next season. Amen. Yes, Amen. Give the Lord a hand of praise as you're taking your seats. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. We thank God for all that he has done thus far. Listen, if it's your first time visiting with us today, if you will raise that hand so that we can see you. You don't have to say anything. We just want to acknowledge it. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. I see another one. God bless you. Amen. God bless you. Thank you so much, my friends, for being with us today. On behalf of Lady April um, and all of our UCC family, we appreciate you for taking the time to come out and visit with us today. Amen. Listen, if you would take out your cell phones and scan the QR code on the screen behind me, uh, we would love to connect with you, be praying with you. Um, it doesn't mean that you're joining the church, but it will give you more information about who we are um, and an opportunity there to join if you would like to do that online. Uh, we would love to connect with you here. I believe there's a place here just for you. Amen. Listen, when you guys go out, uh, if you will stop by the purple table directly out the, uh, the doors there, um, there's a gift out there uh, waiting for you guys. Uh, just, to, just to thank you from us. Uh, just to say we appreciate you for worshiping with us today and pray that you'll come back. Amen. Give God a praise for our first time guest. Let's do this very quickly. We're going to get ready to worship the Lord uh, in our giving of tithes and offerings. Y'all sound like a blessed people. A blessed people. Amen. Amen. A blessed people praise before front end. 
<laughs> they don't wait to the back end. They praise on the front end for what they expect to see. And today as we sow seed, we sow seed in faith and expectation. Amen. Uh, the Bible says in the book of Ecclesiastes 11, cast your bread upon the waters and not many days. Listen, it will return to you in a bountiful harvest. The revelation that we receive from this word is though a seed leaves your hand, it will never leave your life. It will work for you. That seed is working for you. And so, Father, we thank you for every seed that we sow today. We sow in faith and expectation. Father, we sow in obedience and believe for abundance. We sow, most importantly, out of relationship and worship. We have a heart for the har harvest. We have a heart to sow. So, Father, today we ask that you take this seed, multiply it, increase it in the name of Jesus. Uh, Father, as worship unto you. And we thank you for the many blessings that return unto our life and our family. Thank you for covering and keeping us. Thank you for providing for us. Thank you for making the way. Thank you, Father, that a giver never runs out. We'll always have sufficiency in everything and lacking nothing. Thank you for jobs, better jobs, raises, contracts, bonuses, checks in the mail, gifts and surprises, lost money found, bills paid off, debts demolished. We declare and decree royalties received in the name of Jesus. And Father, we declare most importantly we'll be great stewards of every level of wealth and dimension of wealth you'll place upon our lives. Thank you that we're being raised to new dimensions, ah, new stewards, greater stewards, greater managers. And Father, we give you praise and glory for strategy. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Whew. Amen. Listen, there are a couple of ways that we can give today. Um, if you need a giving envelope, if you would raise that hand so that our ushers can see you. Um, you need a giving envelope. You're giving that way. You can also give. Lady April and I are giving by way of text to give. We're texting the number 77977 and texting the code Unity CC Give. It's on the screen behind me. You can also scan the QR code with your cell phone and it'll lead you right into the giving portal as we are putting seed in the ground. Uh, you can also cash out dollar sign Unity Christian Center. Um, uh, let's give God a praise for our parking lot coming together. Amen. We hadn't reached that level of paving just yet, uh, but we did get some fresh gravel out there. Amen. So we get some of that dust off of you. Uh, so give it a little chance to settle uh, real good uh, and things are coming along way. Well. I want to thank God for Carmuse Lime Plant partnering with us. Uh, Brother Kenneth Williams uh, for spreading that for us. Amen. And Bull Construction Company, thank you so much uh, for all of the donations. Won't the Lord make a way? out of no way amen so we thank god for that progress amen um listen when you are ready to give if you will stand on your feet all over the building minister felix is going to come and give the closing prayer uh and blessing over our seed listen we're going to give row by row starting with the front from the front to the rear section by section so we don't have a traffic accident and lady april and i will see you out front hug your neck and shake your hand <laughs> 